There are new concerns about Ukraine's nuclear power plants. Russia now in control of two, including Chernobyl. Ukraine has 15 nuclear plants across the country, all now potential targets in a war zone. Terry Moran is tracking this dangerous situation. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, George. It's an unprecedented situation. Nuclear facilities swept up into war, and this isn't accidental, not like combat spilling over into these places. This is part of the Russian plan. This morning, the world is on high alert. The specter of nuclear disaster looms over the combat in Ukraine. Russian forces have gone after Ukraine's nuclear power plants, including Europe's largest one, Zaporizhia, which has six nuclear reactors. And Chernobyl, site of the worst nuclear power plant disaster in history in 1986, now decommissioned. Ukrainian officials warning Chernobyl has been disconnected from the national electric power grid by Russia. It's a situation that is very fragile. The Ukrainian foreign minister claims that after 48 hours off the grid, radiation leaks at Chernobyl would be, quote, imminent. But the International Atomic Energy Agency counters there is no immediate risk. There are backup diesel generators. Those can continue to operate uninterrupted for several days before needing refueling. Now at Chernobyl, more than 200 workers have been manning the plant since Russia took control two weeks ago. Russia releasing this video they say was shot inside the plant with their troops and Ukrainian personnel. Psychologically, it's not good at all. So it's very difficult for them to stay there. They actually switched off internet in there and all means of communication are switched off. At Zaporizhia, a huge nuclear facility, Russia seized control after a pitched battle. And now Ukraine's energy minister claims the workers there are being held hostage. Russian occupation forces torture the operating staff of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The safety of both facilities depends on the well-being of their workers. I think the concern is over ensuring the security and safety of the facilities in the Ukraine in the long term. Ukrainians say that the reason the Russians attacked and seized Chernobyl, which is not producing any electric power, of course, not for 40 years, is because they want to use it as a base of operations. They know Ukrainians won't attack it. George? Okay, Terry, thanks. Let's bring in our military analyst, retired Colonel Stephen Gander. And Steve, let's begin with that situation at the nuclear reactors. You saw the IAEA official downplaying the meltdown threat. How worried should we be? Uh, he is downplaying it, George, but remember what he said, only a couple days of diesel. So Chernobyl I'm not as worried about, but down here, the largest nuclear power plant in all of Europe. If they lose power, they lose cooling to the reactor cores. So if you're relying on diesel generator backup and you lose that diesel generator backup because you're not able to resupply, you're risking a Fukushima-like disaster. So the threat is always there. What's the overall military situation now? Still fairly static, George. It hasn't changed much as we've been talking over the past week. In fact, the Russian Air Force is actually flying less than they have been in the past few days. So the terms and conditions on the, on the battlefield have not changed, which is why the, uh, the negotiations are going so poorly uh, between the two countries. Well, that's what I wanted to follow up on. We, we saw the foreign ministers meeting in with no progress at all, some, some bad-mouthing by both sides coming out of the meeting, but they also both said that there would be a fourth round of negotiations in Belarus. So is there still life in the diplomatic process? There has to be, George. Uh, we know that the, that the Russians are not going to achieve their political goals in the Ukraine. The Ukrainian military is not going to defeat the Russians. And so something has to happen on the battlefield where one side is going to be able to have the negotiating advantage and force the other to accept terms that they don't want. We are not there yet, and we need to watch what the Russians do next to change the terms on the battlefield. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.